Hello, it's Barbara here talking to you for the sermon for this week, or I think it's probably more of a talk this week. I'm going to begin with a Bible reading, as we usually do, and the reading is from Matthew 15, beginning at the 29th verse. Jesus left them there. He walked along the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Large crowds came to him. They brought blind people and those who could not walk. They also brought disabled people, those who could not speak, and many others. They laid them at his feet and he healed them. The people were amazed. Those who could not speak were speaking. The disabled were made well. Those not able to walk were walking. Those who were blind could see. So the people praised God. Then Jesus called for his disciples to come to him. He said, I feel deep concern for these people. They have already been with me for three days. If they don't have anything to eat, I don't want to send them home away hungry. If I do, they will become too weak on their way home. He said, his disciples answered him. There is nothing here, they said. Where could we get enough bread to feed this large crowd? How many loaves do you have? Jesus said. Seven, they replied, and a few small fish. Jesus told the crowd to sit down on the ground. He took the seven loaves and the fish and he gave thanks. Then he broke them and gave them to his disciples. And the disciples, in turn, gave them to the people, all of them ate and were satisfied. And after that, the disciples picked up seven baskets of leftover pieces. The number of men who ate was 4,000. Women and children also ate. After Jesus sent the crowd away, he got into the boat and then he went into the area near, near Magadan. I think this is a very familiar reading Lots of us do remember that reading, and it's a wonderful reading about Jesus sharing food and healing and looking after people. And the reason why I'm using it this morning is because today, at the end of July and the beginning of August, one of our major agricultural festivals is celebrated, and this is a festival called Lammas. It's a very old agricultural festival and it celebrates the first fruits of the season. It celebrates the beginning of the harvest, not the end, the beginning. And it corresponds to the Hebrew feast of weeks when a sheaf of the first of the barley harvest was offered at the altar and blessed. And traditionally, the, all the first fruits of the harvest belong to God. They were offered to God. This included crops, animals and people. And in the Bible, as Jesus was the firstborn son to Mary and Mary and Joseph traveled from Bethlehem to the temple in Jerusalem when he was just eight days old. And they sacrificed two doves in their thanksgiving for their firstborn. Lammas is a very old tradition far older than celebration of harvest. We celebrate harvest when all is safely gathered in. We celebrate Lammas in faith for the beginning of harvest. We all know about the other harvest services or the other rural services. We've got Plough Sunday, usually the first Sunday after Epiphany. We've got Rogation, usually the fifth Sunday after Easter. Harvest, September or October. And Lammas traditionally has been the 1st of August, but these days it tends to be more the end of July because with more modern methods, our harvest, as we know in our rural areas, is earlier and earlier. And we're very accustomed to see tractors going through our villages from the middle of July onwards. And the reason why I've got this backdrop behind me, which is a photo from when I was farming and I had a llama service 
in my lumming shed, which of course would have been empty in August. But in that shed, I celebrated the first fruits of many, many years by lambing lots and lots of sheep, probably many thousands. And the word lammus, the derogation or the meaning, comes from the word loaf mass. And the tradition in the early churches was to present a barley loaf, a loaf made from the first barley crop at the altar on the first of the crop that was harvested of barley as a gift. And often it was used for the communion as well. So a barley loaf would be blessed, put on the altar to thank God for the harvest to come and to pray for a good harvest. And it was used, as I said, often for the communion. Lammas is a time to thank God for his creation. It's a time to celebrate. Celebrate God's creation, God's world, and also to give thanks for the people who look after it. It's easy to know why we celebrate harvest, isn't it? All, hopefully, all is safely gathered in as we sing in our wonderful hymn, We Plough the Fields. All the hard work's finished. We know what our harvest is. And hopefully, there's enough for us and for those who need it throughout the world. Enough for people to eat, enough to keep animals going throughout the winter. But with Lammas, we celebrate in faith. We give to God the first fruits of the harvest. I think it shows much more faith than celebrating when the harvest is in. At the end of the harvest, we know what we've got, we know what we've gathered in, and we know what we can spare to give to others. At Lammas, the very beginning of the harvest, we don't know what our harvest will be. We have to give in faith. We offer to God the first and the best of what we have. If there are storms or floods or drought, we might not have any more, but we have given to God and blessed the first and the best of what we have in faith. God gives us his best. He gives us all of his creation, all of his world. Farmers live, work and care for that creation. We can all think of many examples of people giving their best to God through, throughout the Bible. That person who gave the loaves and the fishes traditionally thought to be a young boy. That's all he had, that simple lunch of loaves and fishes. He gave his best to God, but look what God did with them. Through Jesus, he spread that food to feed those many thousands of people, and not a bit was wasted, all was used. In other examples in the Bible, we've got <clears throat> Many things the widows might, people who gave their faith, and in particular the disciples who gave up everything to follow Jesus. Jesus then empowered them to preach the gospel, to love other people, and to heal. And that love is still with us today. We still have to celebrate everything that God gives us. And giving to God doesn't need to be a very major thing. We just need to give to God what comes first and what comes best when we're deciding what to do, when we're deciding what we can give. There's an old tradition in the church of tithing, giving 10% of what we earn or what money we have into the church, into God. But surely in our lives, we can do much more than that. We can give to God our best, all that we have, to put God first in each part of our lives, so that whenever we think about it, God is first. So the lammas loaf, to go back to that, the barley loaf, baked in faith, in faith that God would provide the rest of the harvest. Not, we don't give to him what we've already got, we give in faith and love. So what more can each one of us give to God in faith and in love?
and maybe to think what more should we give to God in faith and love. As we come together in our benefices, there's going to be some changes. We've all got to learn to adapt and to change and to give to God in faith and love as we move forward as a joint benefice. As we give to our churches, to our God, to other people through God's love, our best, our best love, and thank God for all of his creation, which we can enjoy in our villages every single day. I want to finish with a prayer for Lammas, the collect prayer for Lammas. O oh God, who has made heaven and earth and all that is in them, we pray you to bless the first fruits of the harvest and to multiply them abundantly. We pray for seasonable weather, that this year's harvest may be a plentiful one that we can share with those who need it. And rejoicing in all of your gifts, may we offer our thanks to your loving God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.